to have back with us uh, to start a Monday and a fabulous Monday. We have Adrian Jameson with us representing Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Central Arizona. And we are going to talk today about launching a new fundraising initiative, what that might look like, and in particularly now that we are in the recovery phase or time of the pandemic. So we'll hear more from Adrian here shortly. We start every episode uh, extending our sincerest gratitude and our deepest appreciation to all of our presenting sponsors you see right in front of you on the screen. Go out and find them online. Um, they're very active on social media, LinkedIn, and um, give them a thumbs up, some love, uh, just some really genuine follow. These are amazing organizations that are here to support your amazing work. And uh, Julia, I'm so grateful that you did let me in today. For those of you, I, I had a little bit of a problem signing in and I thought, uh-oh, is this my sign? But I am so glad to be here with you, Julia. Um, Julia, of course, is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, also known as the Nonprofit Nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. Now, we shared a little bit about our guest and who she is and why she's here. And she is a familiar face. She came and joined us uh, earlier. She actually serves as the president of the YNPN, which stands for Young Nonprofit Professional Network of the Phoenix area. So Adrian is on. I asked her to come on to talk to us. Uh, with her hat of director of development with Big Brothers Big Sisters Central Arizona to talk to us about fundraising initiatives as it comes around launching a new campaign. And then you've got something else that you're going to share with us that I'm excited to learn. So welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, conversation with you two is always amazing. And I know uh, the people watching always have great feedback as well. So maybe we'll learn a few things too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're thrilled to have you on. So I'm going to ask you to go back into history. <laughs> when was the last time that your organization um, launched a major campaign? Yeah, so this is this is an interesting question. So I have been with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Arizona for two years. And so I would say that this is my first new program with them. Um, you know, it's a 65-year-old organization with a very established um, fundraising, um, plat, you know, campaign uh, with lots of diverse things going on. And so it took me about a year to learn what all those components were. And then in the second year, um, we had a little thing called COVID. And so it was learning everything new. Everything was different. We couldn't take anything for granted. Um, so as we come into this rebuild, um, hopefully next year, this is, this is going to be something that's both new for me and new for the organization. So we're really excited to launch something that's considered new to, to all of us. Did you um, hit the, as we like to say, hit the pause button on anything that you were um, going to be debuting or launching or what did that look like? Cause yeah. you're active. Well, I hate to say pause because that would um, imply some sort of um, intention that we didn't want to move forward. And, and that was just not the case. Okay. I think what we saw last year is that we couldn't take anything for granted. So everything that we had planned on doing and we knew had been successful for us in the past, we couldn't necessarily count on that to do it again. Um, but we found these amazing sources of revenue and support from other places that we just haven't, you know, had partnerships with, with before. So um, nothing was intentionally put on hold. It was just kind of what can we do now and today to keep moving forward. Yeah. So then talk about some of those impacts. I mean, I think that um, this has been the big fear. I mean, mm -hmm. Jarrett and I, for more than 300 episodes, have heard so many different stories. But Jarrett, don't you think that it always depended on what that organization's mindset was? Always. <laughs> I think it was the mindset as well as um, the leadership right? Like who, who are the leaders as well as the board, um, the leadership of the board as well. So yes, talk, talk to us about this, Adrian. And if you would hate to put you, um, you know, throw this curveball, but would you be willing to share with us the operating budget for your organization so that we can just put into perspective kind of like, what are these dollars that we're talking about? So we have a $2.6 million budget and about 500,000 of that comes from a, a separate partnership that we have with um, Savers Thrift Stores. So that looks a little bit different. And that was impacted 
um, significantly by COVID because their stores weren't open. Um, and so that has always been a very reliable, consistent source of income for us that we really, um, again, you know, we just couldn't couldn't necessarily count on. Um, I'm happy to say that now they're back on track and exceeding where we have been in previous years. Um, but last year things were, were a little shifty. Um, and I would say the other area where we really struggled just like everyone else's events. Um, Big Brothers Big Sisters has a beautiful events calendar that spreads out across the year um, for major events that touch on different audiences. And um, we were lucky enough to have our annual gala in February right before Oh, perfect we weren't, timing. We weren't having events anymore. And so we were placed very well just, just by the fortune of the calendar. Um, but several of our other events had to be moved to a virtual platform. And we just found we weren't making as much money as we normally would. Our expenses were generally lower, but um, yeah, it's just, it's just not the same having people in person. Well, and so many of your events are community driven, whereby, you know, they're, they're almost, I would use the word a drive concept where, um, you have community members that go to a certain location for a, a, a period of time or, you know, it's, it's raw, raw. You've always been brilliant at getting strong media coverage and media partnerships to lose all that had to be devastating. It was. Um, and we really had to rethink what an event looks like and how do we be successful, how do we recreate that sense of community when we're not in the same, same room. So one of the things we did was, um, Normally in the fall, we host a casino night, which is super fun. It's hosted by our young professionals group. It's a little more casual than some of our other events. So how do you create that like playfulness and energy when none of us can be in person? Um, and so we decided to do a virtual game night and hosted uh, trivia and, and people could do, you know, they have their team still so they could invite their friends to participate. A few people did very limited house parties with people who were already in their pod um, you know, we sent the goodie boxes to those people and we utilize peer to peer fundraising. So our attendees to game night could either donate or fundraise to their ticket price. And, and we found that was a great way both to continue raising money and to engage new people in our community. Love that. I think that's fabulous. And, and to talk about engagement, you feel like you did get new um, folks involved or was it that you're just more preaching to the choir and not letting go of that stewardship? We we definitely got new people involved and also continue to steward those people who have been with us for years and years. Um, we did a round of phone calls to our donors last year um, to anyone who had given in the last two years just to check in and see how they were doing and it was um, a great relationship building tool. We got to talk to people and I feel like it really broke down some of those professionalism barriers that we often encounter with their donors, you know, when people have their, their dogs, their kids, their whatever in the background, the mailman, um, and reminds you that we're all just people and we are all just trying to get through this day of this pandemic. Um, and it just humanizes the whole, the whole process. And, and I felt that that was, uh, you know, a really important thing for our donors and our relationships with them. How long did that take you? And when did you do that? I want to say we started in July of last year. Um, so it was very much dead heat of the summer. Everyone was tired. And I would say it took, um, took us a, probably two or three weeks to complete with um, two or three people making those phone calls. And again, it was one of those places where we couldn't take in any of our previous assumptions. You have these established relationships with your donors. You know what they do for work. Um, but I would call someone to see how they were doing and their small business had closed or they were in an area of work that was, um, you know, considered essential and were doing really well or people had their kids at home. And it just totally changed their dynamic of what they are able to offer the organization. And so we really wanted to shift the conversation. Like we're not here to ask you for anything. We're here to see how we can support you because you've been an amazing supporter of us all along. Wow. I've been calling that the return on relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Because we preach so much ROI, ROI, ROI. And uh, really, I think COVID made an opportunity that I hope we continue and will carry on for, you know, forever is truly that genuine connectivity and connection to the person, right? So really having that one-on-one -on -one or just really, you know, authentic engagement, like, asking, how are you? Mm -hmm. And we have seen just like you, Adrian, some of the best nonprofit leaders 
seeing such a great, ironically, ROI because they focused on that return on relationship and really went at it the same way. There was no ask. There was no solicitation. It was a genuine check-in. Um, and I'm curious if you actually learned a lot more about your supporters during that time than maybe before. Oh, absolutely. You know, we, you look for, in, in fundraising, people come to you or you seek them out and um, there's certain things that drive, you know, we, we serve children. So everyone who comes to us loves children, but what does that, what does that mean for you? Why is it because you were a teacher? Is it because you have your own kids? Is it because you had an amazing mentor growing up? Um, those are the conversations that you get to have when you take the time to make a phone call versus when you do your donor surveys. You know, donor, donor surveys are a great way to reach people. You find out, you know, at a very high level, why do they choose to give? Are they happy with their experience with you? Um, but when you're really looking to build those relationships, the, the phone call says, oh, I hear your dog barking in the background. What kind of dog do you have? You know, and, and it then you find out that they also love animals and so that they volunteer at the Humane Society and their kids love to do that with them. You know, it's a whole chain of conversation that happens much more naturally. Um, and you get beyond that initial, why do you give, you know? <laughs> right, right. right. Um, you know, now we want to talk to you on, and have you explain to us about the launch of this new campaign. Um, and I'm going to ask you to explain what the 50-50 is. But then I'd love for you to kind of share with us how maybe your conversations with your donors and COVID impacted what this would look like. Because I can't imagine it was just something that, you know, out of the box, you're going to do it the same way you would have oh, done no. before. <laughs> this is something that's totally new to Big Brothers Big Sisters and in large part to the Phoenix community. Um, the Arizona Humane Society already does a very successful 50-50 raffle in some of our local sports teams. Um, but this is something we, uh, you know, you get those phone calls all the time. Maybe you want to try a new platform, a new service, and most of the time say no. But this is something that we were kind of interested in because like many organizations, we saw the impact on COVID on our donors and on our revenue streams. And we were really looking for some way to develop consistent, reliable revenue that would be pandemic proof or whatever the next pandemic is, we want to find something different. Um, you know, you want to continue to diversify that fund, that uh, pie of revenue and build it up as much as you can. Um, so we have partnered with a company to start running a large scale 50-50 scale raffle campaign. And it is something we had to look at um, as an investment for our organization. Um, and so we're going to be doing significant marketing around it, a lot of um, donor education with our current um, constituents and also looking to bring in a lot of new people. Since this is something we haven't offered to our community before, we think this will be a great way to reach new people who have an interest in collaborating with us um, in this fun, engaging, casual way without having to commit to an event or being in person anywhere. Wow. Okay. Well, let's back up. Um, <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> I'm like, we're, no, no, I'm super, super excited about this. So first off, um, is this a technology-based kind of partnership? Yes. So this is going to be a digital, all online, 50-50 raffle campaign that will run every quarter for at least the next year. Wow. Every so quarter. We bought this first quarter of at least $10,000. Now, okay. Tell me a little bit. Is wow. that coming from the organization? Is there um, a major, you know, donor that said, hey, I'll... I'll pony up for this. Like, how did you yeah, set this you? up? Yes. So our partner, our platform called Ascend um, is reaching out to us. They are working to build their name in the community and they are looking for organizations. Um, we kind of fit the mold for what they were looking for as far as size and scope and reach. Um, and so they were willing to help us take the leap on this first one so that it was low risk for us um, with the idea that we would move forward being great partners for hopefully all of time. So that's what we're all shooting for. That is fantastic. Okay, so um, let's talk about the interface. Is this something that is going to be predominantly um, a mobile device, or do you think people will go on your website? By the way, is fabulous. I know you guys have redone that wow. over the last couple of years, but is it going to be something that people um, navigate through push notifications, or how? How is the engagement? We are actually setting up a dedicated domain for this specific campaign. 
We okay. have the greatest domain name ever, az5050.com. It doesn't get easier than that. <laughs> How was that <laughs> available? I know. Uh, so you can get there from your mobile device. We'll link to it from our website. But we're also going to be doing a lot of digital advertising to try and grow who we're already talking to. Um, and our goal, of course, is this is a fundraising campaign. But what we do at Big Brothers Big Sisters is we match adult volunteers with with children in our community who can benefit from mentorship. Um, so the more people we're able to reach with this digital advertising, the more people we can educate about that mission and hopefully get to join us as volunteers as well. Yes. I'm thinking, knowing you, Adrian, and I've seen some of your inner workings and your phenomenal spreadsheets that I know you and your team <laughs> manage, that this is one piece of, as I would call it, like an entry point when it comes to fundraising academy. I know Tony Bell would also speak to this you know, it's really that donor cycle. And so someone participating in the 50-50, maybe they are, you know, a current supporter or a new supporter. I'm sure you and your team, and maybe you could talk to us about what you've done to, um, you know, create initiatives and engagement opportunities once they participate in this 50-50, because as you said, it's quarterly. Mm -hmm. How are you intending to engage and can, you know, back to that ROR, return on relationship with this audience. Exactly. So we are really looking at those people who are, will be participating in two buckets. Those people who are already a part of our constituency and those people where this is new, a new thing for them, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, and so we are going to be, it's so it's an easier thing for people to say yes to than like an event. So yeah. we say yes to the raffle. Um, we want you to say yes to why this raffle is impacting Big Brothers Big Sisters so that you can start learning about where this money goes. And then maybe you'll choose to come to one of those events or maybe you'll choose to support us through your tax credit. Whatever that is, whatever you choose to give, that's the journey we want you to take. And saying yes to a raffle prize where you might win $10,000 is an easy thing to ask of people. Absolutely. So you really see this as a, as a pretty strong POE or point of entry for your organization. Yes, that is our hope. So we are launching our first campaign next Monday. So maybe I'll have a better, you know, <laughs> so I can tell you what we're hoping and what we think is going to happen. Um, and yeah. a month from now, we'll have a much better idea of what it looks like for sure. Um, but the company we're working with has, has done this in several places very successfully. So we feel really good about our numbers and the return on investment and what it's going to look like as far as bringing new people into our organization. So when does it, if it starts on Monday, when does it end? Yeah, so it will end on July 15th. So it will run a month each quarter. Um, and we've really slated it each quarter. So it's not interfering with one of those other major campaigns, one of our events, um, tax credit or giving season. We want to make sure we're not taking from anywhere we're, where we are already being successful, making sure that we are focused on using this as a new source of revenue. Okay. So just so I understand, it's, it's a month long campaign per quarter. It's not every month. Not every month. Okay. So you'll have four in the first year in the first year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So you have to come back on. Uh, we have to schedule. <laughs> Let you know how it goes. We're all excited yes. now. <laughs> yeah. Now this uh, company that you're working with, did they steward the um, rules and regulations through the Department of uh, Gaming? Yes. So Arizona, and I think this is one of the reasons that they were interested in us, as far as gaming regulations is a little bit more relaxed than other states across the country. Um, this company also works in Canada, so they're familiar with those rules there as well. Um, so we do have a very formal set of rules. You need to be in the state of Arizona when you purchase your tickets. They have this amazing technology that can verify Ooh. that. Um, you know, you need to be 18 years or older. And of course, anyone in our organization who works at Big Brothers Big Sisters is not eligible to win. So we don't have to worry about that. So um, we are very fortunate. And that's one of the things we found this year is that we really need to lean into our partners who are experts um, throughout COVID. When we're looking at how do we transform our event? What do we do to be, you know, virtually? How do we make sure we're participating in best practices? We're leaning on our partners to be those areas, to be those experts where we can't be experts in everything. Um, so I'm really excited about this partnership and to have their expertise and support along the way, because this is this is my first 50 50. Um, so learning alongside everyone else, too. This is going to be fantastic. And I'm so glad to hear. And, and I would be curious 
Adrian, if you're willing to share kind of how the conversation went internally to help you yeah. make this decision, because as you know, the word of 2020 is pivot. Yeah. And I feel like we continue now to see opportunities. I've always said uh, the nonprofit sector, unfortunately, has typically been risk adverse, right? <laughs> and I myself, I'm a risk taker. I'm an entrepreneur, high risk, high reward. Um, and so I'm curious if you'd be willing to share a little bit about the the internal, like, do we do this? How do we make this decision to move this forward to try something new? Yeah, of course, because you never want to feel like a risk you're taking is jeopardizing your mission. Right? Absolutely. We and we're serving our youth and we have a lot of safe ways to do that. Um, but we did find during COVID that we did things like our events, um, annual giving, areas that we would normally rely on, they can fluctuate based on what our community is, is going through at the time. Um, and so timing wise, this, this kind of came to us at a time where we were looking to find something new and different for us. And so that conversation was, was easier than it might be in a year where we're doing really well. Why would we take on anything new? Um, and I will say that our leadership is, is very supportive. Our executive director, our um, executive team and the board, they're very willing to try new things and say, does this work? Does it not work? Um, and one of the great things about 50-50 is that you only pay out what comes in. <laughs> right. I mean, there is the marketing investment, so I don't mean to underplay that at all. That's a huge right. investment for our organization, um, but we're seeing added value there as it's bringing new people into the organization, either for the 50-50 or from a volunteer standpoint. Um, but in the long term, you're looking at you, you pay out what, what is received in. And so that's how we're looking at it as a risk that we have the capacity to take right now. Mm -hmm. Have you already determined your subsequent uh, dates? We have. So our next one will start in September and close out before we start our annual Paul Car Wash. We would never want to compete with Paul's Car Wash in any way. I was wondering about yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then our, our third one will be in January. And our last one will be similar, a little earlier than this um, in 2022. Very cool. I'm so interested in this um, for so many reasons. I love that you've embraced the technology aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I love that you see this as a way to cultivate um, people in a different way, new people. I love that it can help strengthen the interaction of current donors in a different way, um, because I'm assuming, and talk to us about this um, for a moment, mm -hmm. what are the levels? I mean, is it like you can buy one ticket, you can buy three for a price, five, you know, do you have different layers? Yes, we have three different tiers and we were really took um, our partners expertise, like they, they're the raffle people, you know? So I could have made up some ticket tiers, but they know what works. Um, so I think we have, one, 10, and then like a 200 ticket dollar tier. And the price difference just completely draws you to that 200 um, ticket tier because it's, it's virtual. You know, we, it's not a physical ticket that we're, you know, there's no cost to a ticket for us as an organization. Um, and so we want to incentivize people to really be participating at the highest level that they're comfortable with. Um, and so we've, we've really looked to our partners as the experts there and they have figured out a formula that, that has shown to work. And what are those prices? Yeah, I knew you would ask me. And since we have a I don't have to memorize. I'm so so we are doing oh, 10 tickets for $10, uh, 40 tickets for 20, or for $40, you get 200 tickets. Oh my God. So, so of course you're gonna buy 200 tickets. That's right. Very low um, entry. Yes, yes. We wanna make sure this is something that's accessible. Interesting. Okay, so what, do you have goals for um, the number of people that you want to be selling tickets and goals for uh, the, the dollars raised, or are you just going to kind of let it go and see yeah. how it goes? We would love to get our first pot up to at least $50,000. That's okay. what our partner believes is very doable for our first campaign um, based on what we're investing in marketing and what they've seen um, in the Arizona community, people participating in these types of things before. They think that's a very you know achievable goal. And we're looking at them as our experts. It would be a total guessing game on my end. <laughs> I love this opportunity. It's innovative. It's creative. It's it's new. I mean, I, I've heard of 50-50 of raffles and you had mentioned Adrian, especially when it comes to major sports teams. And 
I don't know, the Phoenix Suns, they're doing pretty good this year. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I heard, and probably all of you nationally heard that as well, but but yeah, looking at, uh, you know, this opportunity that really is a low dollar investment mm-hmm. to attract new supporters. And this is, even though you have to purchase in Arizona, um, this still also warrants the opportunity for out-of-staters to be involved as long as it's purchased within the state of Arizona. Exactly. And, you know, I keep thinking about best case scenario. What if, one of our volunteers or one of our donors won that money. Like what an amazing thing to be able to give to your community. So often we are on the receiving end of these types of gifts. Like that would be best case scenario for me is if one of these amazing people in our community also won this amazing prize. Beautiful. I love that. I am just, I am so excited that first of all, that you are brave enough to come on and talk to us about this. Um, because this is, you know, a big risk. And so I really appreciate that, but I can't wait. Um, we're getting on the horn after this show and we're going to pick at the date for when you come back on to share with us how it went. Uh, yeah. How it went. And, uh, maybe we'll invite the, um, tech company that you partnered with to come on that episode because this is really um, an amazing opportunity for, for so many of us to see what the newness of this recovery is going to be and, and how it's pushing us and stretching us. And so um, just to remind our viewers, um, for our Arizona viewers, and we don't always have a lot of Arizona viewers because we broadcast around the world, but we will be able to jump on the 15th. Yes. Yes, please okay. do. And it's easy to remember az5050.com. How you got that name? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I know. We're very excited. <laughs> you, you might be able to like sell that ultimately. And make oh, I'm sure. I've never <laughs> did. The thing about this is an investment as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Smart. Smart. Wow. Well, Adrian, we just have loved our time with you as we have before. Here's um, Adrian's information I'm the Director of Development for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Arizona and a, a wonderful, wonderful organization. Check out their website. It's just beautiful. Um, the, the national organization has gone through a rebranding, but your website is brilliantly, brilliantly done. And I, I just, um, I'm so, so impressed. So I wanted to give you, you a so big much. shout out of that. I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined by Jarrett Ransom. So all last week I had to say, Jarrett will be back with us. <laughs> She's back now. She's I'm back here. now. She's back and rested and ready to go. Thank you to our presenting sponsors. Of course, without you, we would not be here having these amazing discussions that we get to do. We're so privileged to be able to do that with your support. I want to give a shout out to Fundraising Events TV, our newest program specifically dedicated to fundraising events, we always say from ballrooms to barns, from golf to galas, we've got you covered. Um, so check out fundraisingevents.tv. Whew, share it. Great way to kick off a week in your return. I know, I'm exhausted. I forgot how like emotionally draining a 30-minute episode is. But thank you, Adrian, for joining us. I couldn't have thought of a better way to start the week. I really am joking because I feel so relaxed and refreshed you know, self-care is one of the things we talk about on these episodes. And I am just, again, honored and privileged, Julia, that I could have the opportunity to do just that this last week. So I'm glad to be back. And I hope that you'll all join us again tomorrow. We have another amazing episode, a fantastic lineup this week. Uh, So until then, stay well, so you can do well. See you tomorrow.